Welcome back guys. So the previous video we talked about the lamination and the glassing schedule. Let's actually get to actually starting to the lamination process. So we got to mark out the cut lap. So I'm going to mark a line all the way around the surfboard and I've built this little jig, this marking tool. And all it is, is it's just a Sharpie or a pencil zip tied to a board. I've measured about an inch and three quarters from here, from the edge of the foam. So I have a block of foam here, which will rub up against the surfboard like this. So the foam against foam won't really damage it. So I'm just gonna hold it in place. This actually comes off, but uh, just keep it in place. I've measured one and three quarters or so. It just depends on how wide you want it. So I kind of determined how wide I wanted it the lap line and then I'm just going to mark it. So then I'm just going to come across and do this. So let's get to it. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to get covered up anyway. Because we're laminating the bottom first, we mark the deck, obviously, because the lap's going to come on top like that. So let's have a look all the way around the board. Looks pretty good. I had one little mess up in the back here where uh, I just had a little slip, but that's okay. Um, it's not that critical, because especially since I'm going to be painting the hot coat, we won't even see that. But I just got to remember when I'm taping, I'm going to tape right up to here. Now we're going to actually tape the inside to protect this part of the board because the lap is going to come up over and then we're going to actually remove the excess once it's cured. So we're going to use some good quality masking tape and we're going to wrap all the way around. Now that we have the fiberglass laid out over the board, we've cut it off. 
we need to trim the fiberglass so that it lands on the actual part of the tape. We don't want it to overlap the tape, but and we don't want it to come short to the tape because that defeats the purpose of having the tape to begin with. So we need it to just land on the tape so that we don't have too much excess fiberglass to play with and cut off later, but not so much, um, not so much that it uses a ton of resin as well. I like using a pair of dollar store scissors to cut. Uh, once they get dull and, you, uh, and used up, then I just toss them. So I get a few uses out of a pair. So I'm going to cut all the way around. Uh, when you're cutting fiberglass, I recommend wearing a respirator or a mask. To, so when you, when you cut the fiberglass, little shards or strands of fiberglass gets airborne. And you want to keep that out of your lungs. It's probably not great for you. Also, I like to wear gloves when I do this because when you cut, the little particles land on your hands and stuff and it'll make you itch like crazy. So, uh, gloves. We need to make a few relief cuts around the nose and the tail, anywhere there's a curve, where there's a sharp curve. So around the nose here, this will probably laminate just fine. But once you start getting right about here on the nose, you're gonna have to do a relief cut here so that you can fold each section in. So I'll probably do one here. Kinda like that. And then I'll just kind of fold each one over just to see around where I need to do a relief cut. The fiberglass cloth will give a little bit when you're working with it with the resin. I kind of just know from experience that I don't need to do that because this nose is kind of flat here. It's not doesn't come to a point. If it came to a point, I'd probably do a cut like this and then leave a flap in the front and then wrap the sides and then wrap this flap down, which is kind of probably what I'll end up doing. So that's the front. So we got a couple relief cuts here for lamination. That should fold quite nicely like that. All right, now that we got the fiberglass all laid out on the board, it's time to do the lamination. So let's talk really quickly about the materials and the items that you need to do the lamination. First thing, of course, is you need epoxy. Uh, I like using Resin Research. This is a couple years old. Uh, they might have more modern, better formulations. I found this stuff was the best. Uh, it stays nice crystal clear. I've had really great experience with it. It wets out nice. Um, great stuff. At least I think it's great stuff. Um, and that comes in a two to one ratio, two parts resiner, one part uh, hardener. <clears throat> to go with it, you need something called Additive F. And it's uh, it has xylene in it. This stuff is really great for helping the epoxy wet out. I really like this stuff. It helps prevent fish eyes, which is the big reason why I like using it. So you don't need much. I don't never measure it. I just throw maybe like a cap full into each batch. Works really well. 
helps with the lamination for wetting out, uh, helps with the hot coat, just helps it spread out and prevent fish eyes. Really, really helpful. Respirator. I like using a respirator, charcoal filter respirator. I work in an enclosed spot, uh, mostly because of the xylene. That gives off a really pungent, well, really, really um, strong smell. It's probably not stuff in there that's probably not great for you. The epoxy hardener also kind of can irritate your lungs a little bit, even though it is low VOC compared to, say, polyester resin. But anyways, can't put a price on your lungs. Lots of gloves, disposable gloves. So keep a bunch of those around. Scissors for cutting off any strands of loose fiberglass. That's your glassing. Digital scale, super important. This is really great for measuring out the epoxy by weight. Don't do volume, use a digital scale for your ratios. And follow the manufacturer uh, for the epoxy of the ratios because the, the volume, the volume uh, mixing is slightly different, I believe, than the weight mixing, so the measurements. Squeegees for moving the epoxy around. These ones, just is just Bondo brand one, used for um, for auto, bo uh, auto body work. Yep, really common. Yogurt containers, keep a stack of these. Um, ice cream containers, yogurt containers, any containers that are similar, similar to this, instead of buying containers for mixing your epoxy, you can just mix it in that and throw them out when you're done. Some pieces of fiberglass that we had left over from when we uh, cut out the fiberglass for the board. This is great for wiping off your hands, wiping off your tools, your scissors. Um, really great when you're working on the epoxy so you can get the resin off and just toss these when you're done. What's nice about them is they're nice and clean, same as the, the board itself. So I don't think I missed anything. Uh, so those are mainly the things you need for lamination, but I want to talk really quickly that I keep a journal of all the boards I've built and just in just on paper and I mark out the design, the amount of epoxy I used, the uh, shape of the board, the rail bands, the template, the stringer that I used, just general notes. It really comes in handy so what I was able to do is I was able to kind of figure out, because it's been a while since I made a board, how much resin I should use for this board. So I decided that I'm going to do, based on my previous boards, around 450 grams of total mixed epoxy for the bottom. Now the deck is going to be different because it's going to have an extra layer of epoxy, uh, sorry, extra layer of fiberglass. So it's going to require more resin, obviously. But I think 450 should get me where I want to be. If you mix up too much, it's a waste. If you don't mix up enough, then it's a pain because then you got to mix up more while the other stuff's starting to set. It's Almost better to have more than not enough. It just really depends. I've ran out before and then I mixed up some and I still was very successful. Uh, but if it's your first board, you probably don't want to mess around. So there's that balance of saving the material and cost versus screwing up the board completely. So I'll leave that up to you guys to decide uh, what method you want to do. And I'm using grams instead of the imperial system instead of ounces because grams are just easier to work with on the scale and it's just you get more granularity for your measurement. So that should do it covering everything. Uh, it's going to be a little hard for me to film so I got to set up the cameras and my hands will be full of epoxy and I'll have the respirator on so I probably won't be narrating any of it. Uh, one thing I will mention is once you mix up your epoxy, you mix it up well, you should pour out the bulk majority of it out of the container because the pot life of epoxy uh, is really dependent on um, the temperature and the volume. So I would pour it all out so it doesn't set off too quickly. I learned that from experience because I had some go off a little too quickly in the pot and I ruined the batch. So just something to keep in mind. Also related to temperature, I like to glass when the temperature is above 15 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but you want to make sure that it's warm because uh, if it's too cold, uh, your epoxy will be too viscous, it'll be thick, it'll be really hard to spread out, just hard to work with. I like to be around the 20 to 23, 24 degree mark. That's a really nice working temperature and the epoxy doesn't set off too quickly. If you get any higher than that, the epoxy, you're going to get less time to work with it. So it's really important that you spread it all out on the board before, uh, before it starts to kick. 
Okay, let's uh, start mixing some stuff up, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to film how I do the, the relief cuts and the laps on the bottom. I have two cameras. I have my main camera, and I'll set up my secondary camera facing upward looking at it. And we'll see how this works out. And the last thing I forgot to mention was uh, I like to lay some plastic out on the floor so it catches all the epoxy drips. The reason why I have this batch of epoxy in a container is because I have a crack in the bottom for those of you guys who are, who are just wondering. The other thing I forgot to mention about the epoxy is make sure to, if it's older epoxy that you've had, this, I've had this batch for quite some time, epoxy will and can go bad, or can and will go bad. Um, so just do a test. So I tested out a piece yesterday, I mixed it up, make sure that this epoxy is still set because you don't want to laminate your board and then realize that the epoxy is bad and then it's going to be garbage. I like to add just a little bit of additive F to the resin first. So now when you're mixing your resin, you want to make sure that you scrape the sides really well. I'm going to put my respirator on from here on. So uh, let's get working at this. And also wear old clothes because um, if you're new at this, it will get messy. So I think I'm going to run a little short, so I'm going to mix up just a tad bit more. Um, I'm going to mix another 50 to 75 grams. I got most of it, the majority of it wetted out, just ran a little short.
All right, that's all done now. Came out great. Nice, tight lamination. Um, so there's no pooling of resin. I made sure to remove the excess resin. So you don't want any resin pooling. You don't want any big blobs of epoxy. You want to be able to see the weave of the fiberglass. Make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, now we're just going to let it set. Then we're going to flip it and cut off the uh, cut lap. Um, so even though I ran out of resin, including all that, having to fix that up, it took about 20 to 25 minutes to do all this. So I have lots of time to work with it. Um, but if it's your first time, it's obviously going to take probably longer. Um, wetting out the laps is probably the part that will take the longest. You want the epoxy to do the work. Pour it on, let it sit, let it soak into the resin on, on its own. Don't force it. Forcing it uh, will just end up making you pull the fiberglass. It'll just create a mess. So let the epoxy do the work. Next, we'll come back and we'll flip it and do the cut lap. We'll remove the excess uh, fiberglass. It's been about three hours and this is now set. You can kind of hear it. It's hard. From this point forward, try to avoid touching the board with your hands directly. Always touch it with gloves because the oils from your hand may contaminate the board. So you probably want to do these next few steps with the lamination, the hot coat, uh, all within a few days. So to avoid any potential contamination. Now, now that it's been about three to four hours, and this has been set, it just depends on the temperature, uh, how quickly the epoxy will cure. We're gonna flip the board. We're gonna take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and then we're gonna trim right where the tape line meets the foam. So we're gonna trim all the way around and we're gonna peel off the excess. It's better to do it now if you let it wait, like if you wait like 24 hours and then do it, um, the epoxy and the fiberglass will be really hard to remove because it's just, uh, it's cured. Right now it's not cured yet, so um, it's still a little soft and that, at this stage it just makes it really easy. Otherwise, um, you're going to be cutting at it with your razor blade or your X-Acto knife. Um, totally doable, it just will take a little longer. So the next step, the next video, will be uh, laminating the deck. But before we do that, we want to prep this really quickly. Um, because we're doing a cut lap, it's, this lap has a bit of an edge on it. We want, to, we want to get rid of that edge. And the way to do that is, once it's completely cured, you can sand it. Or you can just push down on it with a piece of wood or something just to almost like burnish it kind of down into the foam because um, once you laminate with the next layer of fiberglass you won't even notice it that makes it a lot easier there's less sanding sanding fiberglass isn't fun plus you can there's a chance you can nick the foam and take a gouge out of it probably more important in other cases when you're building a board in this case, it doesn't matter as much for aesthetics because I'm going to be painting it after the hot coat and then glossing it. So we're going to hide all these crimes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a popsicle stick like that. And then right along this edge here, I'm just going to kind of push down and burnish it into, into the foam so that I get a nice smooth edge. It doesn't fetch.
in spots like this where the where I did the relief cuts and there's overlaps, what we're gonna have to do here is once it's fully cured, we're gonna sand these off. So we're gonna sand these flush. So there is a little bit of sanding to do, but right now if we go by and we just burnish this in to the foam a little bit, this will save us a lot of time and effort and sanding. So just like that, nothing to it. Traditionally what they would do is they would actually take a little die grinder or a, a sander and they would sand that flush. But I, the reason why I don't like that again is because you can nick the foam. It's really up to you. There's a few different ways to do it. That's just, this is just the way I found it's the easiest way of doing it. And if, um, if you were doing this without having to do a paint job afterwards, let's say you did a tint job, um, the pinstripe will hide all of this anyway, just like I did in my retro single fin. See, absolutely no fetching. Whereas over here, a little bit of a fetch. All right, so that concludes the lamination of the bottom. The next video will be laminating the deck. Very, very similar. Um, the video probably won't be as long as this one. This one was a little more technical to show you guys how to uh, do the relief cuts, how to prep the bore, the theory behind the epoxy, um, which I want to mention one quick thing. When you're laminating um, and hot coating, you try to want to do the, all those within the same period of time um, uh, consecutively because you don't want too much time in between because there's chances of contamination of the board. And number two, Epoxy it takes a few days to fully cure, so you want to take advantage of being able to chemically bond to the previous layer um, as opposed to having just a physical bond once epoxy is fully cured. So try to do it within the same few days. It's not the end of the world if you don't. I've certainly made boards and I've had uh, uh, longer um, time in between coats, between laminations and the hot coat or the gloss coat. Anyways. So this is done, trimmed up, ready to go for the next uh, video. So hopefully I'll get to it here in the next day. And thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you guys out. And see you soon. One last thing. I completely forgot that I was doing glass on fins. Normally I do fin boxes so I don't have to put a reinforcing patch in. It's important to put a reinforcing patch in so that the 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 the, the fins get such stress put placed on them when you're doing turns and they get banged around. Uh, you need a patch just to reinforce the rear area where they're going to be attached. So I went up about 18 to 20 inches around where they're going to be attached and uh, I just cut out a patch of six ounce fiberglass. Ideally this would go under the lamination layer so it would be nice and smooth. I'm just gonna laminate this on, mix up some epoxy, laminate it on, and then just sand in and blend in just the edges. and. Uh, It'll be all covered up later anyway by the hot coat and the, the uh, artwork. Besides, this will glass in and it'll be crystal clear anyway. All right, that should do it for this video. All right, that'll do it.